to muck it. They all they want to muck it on defense and, and try to pick up the speed on offense, but slow it down defensively. Here's Glasson being chased by Moon. Marshall Lou. Kyle Johnson now trying to get inside position and can. Although Ashalou steps back, misses that one. Tavarian Nix gets the offensive board. And then Merrick Klassen. That's the second time in, 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 in this game so far that an offensive rebound has led to a three-point shot and six points. Here's Moon again. Shoots over top of Johnson and drains it. And now you got Xavier Moon feeling a little bit here in the early going of this one. Yeah, great pull-up jumper and good defense there by Kyle Johnson. Not just the lift of Xavier Moon. Johnson hits the side of the backboard. And now here comes Edmonton on the run. Kamba off target. Edmonton will shoot a three-on-three three in transition. They'll settle for the three. They, they feel that they can get that because they rebound so well. Vivier just misses that. And it's going to be Fraser Volleyball. And you know, Jermaine Small has said that when we're rebounding and running, we're a very good team. And that's been on display throughout the summer series. Yes. And both these teams are very good when they're running on offense. They're, they're exceptional at it. The one thing that Edmonton can do is they've got some big size that can come down and score off the misses. Nix is fouled. And Tavaria Nix will go to the line. So, team, teams have done a real good job of their baseline out of bounds. He just get a little slip in there and look for the, the quick dunk. Okay, Joe, what are the keys for today's game? Well, if you're Fraser Valley, you have to defend from the inside out. You can't let them get to the rim like they did with Xavier Moon there. Straight line attacks. And then you have to score off of your defense. And both teams are looking to run out, but they do an incredible job. They lead the, the series with 22 points a game. If you're Edmonton, dictate the pace of the game on offense. Xavier Moon, he drives the bus. And then defend the three-point line early, but then also late. Because it, the, for late clocks, they're always looking to kick it out for a three. Saw Nix at the line yesterday in that win against Hamilton. Fraser Valley shot just 65% from the charity strike, 13 of 20. That needs to improve here this afternoon in this championship game. Think of Peter McNeely, he had it, lost it. Brody Clark was there and couldn't hang on to that ball. And Brody Clark had a foot injury, missed a couple of games. He seems to be okay. He had a strong game coming off the bench yesterday. There's Manigan. Was backcourt made Classen. Classen misses that one. Himself trying to go down the lane. And they wave the bucket off. And that's a good, good defense foul. here. And you watch your hands try to set himself up. And it's more the shoulder dip by Kareem South that causes the charge. Because I felt Jahans was moving. If he doesn't dip his shoulder, it's not a charge. It's a, it's, it's a defensive foul. Classen directing traffic here. Classen, little pocket pass inside. And Nix able to get the deposit for two. Great pass. But the screening from the Bandits has been exceptional. They're solid, strong screens. Deacon Nothing Peter soft. Deacon Peter McNeely misses there on that jumper. Razor Valley by one. And now we've got Merrick Klassen. He got nicked up a little bit there. So Merrick Klassen is very good at he He's a pass-first point guard. And Kyle Johnson, I don't know if he was looking for the dump off there or if it went through his hands. I think he was looking for the dump off. So now, Fraser Valley into the bonus. The class and will shoot a pair. One thing that Fraser Valley does incredibly well is they defend hard, they get their hands in the passing lanes, they're very physical, but they don't foul. But they're sitting here with one foul. And, and they're playing aggressive. 2.40 remaining in the first quarter. Peter McNeely defended well there by Klassen. Brody Clark down the lane, got bumped, no call. And now Fraser Valley moving up the court. 
Here's Glasson. Glasson. And he's knocked down. And they're going to call a travel on Merrick Glasson. Glasson has got a bewildered look on his face. He doesn't agree. Yeah, he's pretty surprised by it. He does a real good job of getting himself to the middle. He feels he did a nice job there. He may have an argument. <laughs> And Merrick Lassen yesterday, big part of that victory against Hamilton with 12 points, four rebounds. And Lassen and Junior Cardugan are going to be so important for this backcourt for Fraser Valley. Yeah, what Merrick Lassen does is he just constantly puts pressure on you because he tries to get the ball to the middle. He'll score, and he gets there, he looks to score, but he's a great passer from there. Not only the dump off passes, but he's a great passer. He'll find the open three point shooters. And. Eric Klassen playing in the Ukrainian League, started his pro career off in the British League. And when you look at him stature-wise, you go, wow, okay, there's, there's not much of this guy, but he is a real stout defender. Yeah, he's and he is physical, uh, don't be fooled. Uh, the Point Loma grad has just been a very good pro his entire career, and he, he's fast and he's quick, he's, he's very quick. and. He's been playing very good basketball for them. The fact that they have two point guards on the court helps their team tremendously. Okay, Amy has more on Merrick Lassen. Yeah, he came into the CEBL highly motivated. Pete, you already mentioned his career in Ukraine. Well, it got abruptly stopped, like most people with COVID, but, you know, he was shooting over 50% from the three. His team was on the brink of a championship. His GM calls and says he was 48 hours to get out of the country. He was craving to get back on the court. Guys. Thank you very much, Amy. Playing for Kiev and the Ukrainian Super League. And a lot of these guys that you're seeing here today, they had their seasons disrupted because of COVID-19. So they are liking this, having a chance to play in this summer series. Like Fraser Valley after the timeout there, went to a 2-3 zone and is not giving Edmonton any chance of second chance opportunities. To Hens Menega, missed that deep three. He had problems from three yesterday in that victory against Hamilton. Yeah, he was just three of 12 from beyond the arc. But he made a big one in Elam time. That's right. Right now, 14-11 lead for Fraser Valley. Here's Daniels, turn around, Jay. Lassen comes in there, gets that board. And this is great defense by the Bandits because they're forcing Edmonton, in that case Daniels, to settle. Strong move by DeVivier, but he can't finish. Peter McNeely, no good. Loose ball, Brody Clark cleans things up and gets two. And that's the second chance opportunities that they're looking for. They do a real good job of getting five guys involved in that transition. Managa, look at the footwork and the defending here from Xavier Moon. DeVivier. Under a minute now in this first quarter. Four on the shot clock. Got to do something in a hurry here. DeVivier, short jumper. Missed that one. And now Edmonton push it up the court. Green Cell, little Euro step. Blast it in, and he's fouled. Yeah, great rebound and great run out. They're not always looking for their point guard. They're looking for the first guard who's open, and this time it's Kareem South. Does a nice Euro step, draws the contact, and finishes with his left hand. So Menega gets called for the foul. Kareem Self one of the role players on this Edmonton team. And you get a sense from the role players that if something were to happen, an injury, guys like Self, Peter McGeeley, they could take on a more expanded role. Yeah, that, that, that bench, just that next man up attitude is there. There's some solid players out here. You can only play five at a time. Lassen, that ball going deep to Nix. The Dugan gets a cross court. The Vivier can't make that shot from range. And a good shot, a good creation by Junior Kadugan to get to the middle and find his open shooter. This will be the last action of the first quarter. Deca Peter McNeely, and that's defended by Nix. As he came in there and swatted it away. Now, Edmonton thinks it's a goaltend. Nonetheless, we've done a quarter here in this one. 
Edmonton, Fraser Valley, a CEBL title on the line. Back with second quarter action right after this. Welcome back, Edmonton leading this one by one. Let's hear from Kyle Julius in his huddle with Fraser Valley. The bottom guard, Rivet it out. Big shoot the first kick out. You had a layup at the rim. You had a good, we had to, we had to be strong. We had to be strong. Let's go, let's go, let's go. Together, one, two, three. And that was the huddle from a little earlier on in the first quarter. Um, break down what Kyle Julius had to say there in that huddle. He just wants him to be aggressive. More than anything else, I just, he wants to be aggressive, he wants to be cool. At this time, you don't want to talk about negative stuff. You're just constantly pushing forward because there is no tomorrow. You got to win today. So I think you'll find both coaches in their timeouts talk about advancement, how we're going to get better, what do we got to do a little bit better, and keep the guys' confidence. And you know, yesterday in that game against Hamilton, I believe it was in the third quarter, late third quarter, where he really motivated his team and he challenged his team to be a little bit better. And they did. Here we go, second quarter action. 15 14 for Edmonton. Edmonton showing some defense there. And that was Xavier Moon. He was trying to get it deep there for Travis Daniels. Real nice set there by the Bandits and real good defense by Xavier Daniels. Need time on the shot clock here on the inbounds. In the corner. Green cell. Left that one short. Here's Marcus Capers. Kicked out of yesterday's game. Got a couple of tees, and he drives, and he puts it away. And Olu Ashlu did him a favor there. Olu did a real nice job of clearing that lane with the screen as he was setting himself in the post. And it was a shame that Capers got kicked out of that game. He had 11 points in just 16 minutes of work. And, and there's Capers, yeah, active hands there. Johnson's gonna try a three off the mark. Yeah, Marcus Capers can guard a lot of positions. He's He's got length, he's got size, and he's got incredible athletic ability to get up off the floor. Xavier Moon, little hook shot. Boy, another trick in his bag of tricks that we've seen here in this tournament. Inside is Capers. He gets surrounded by Edmonton Stingers, and he's getting up slow. Moon, little finger roll. And that's that straight line attack. If you allow him to get down there five on four, you've got to space out. You give him a straight line, he's going to take it. So now Edmonton by three. Junior Cadugan. Johnson, that hits back iron. Fraser Valley coming up short, a couple of trips on offense. Both teams are doing a good job of limiting each team to one shot. They're cleaning up the boards on both ends. So Xavier Moon is fast and quick, and he gets to the middle. He's always looking to score first. And if you take that away, he's going to pass off. But nice, nice little running hook there. Uses his length. He can score so many different ways. Right now, the seventh team up by three. Screen set there by Asholu, and there's Merrick. Merrick Classic coming off that screen and knocking it down for three. And Olo Ashley did a nice job of setting that screen. It just tells you that the Bandits are just much more physical on both defense and offense. And Moon comes right back and hits a two. And analytics in the NBA will tell you that's a bad shot, but for Xavier Moon, like DeMar DeRozan, that's a good shot. Kyle Johnson, last couple of times for him. Coming up empty, shooting that outside jumper. Here's Moon. Moon lobs it in there. He's looking for Jordan Baker. And it looks like they're going to call 
object. Oh, that ball just went out of bounds. I thought they were going to call Baker on a foul. Yeah, Jordan Baker's got a great seal inside. And either he gets his foot tangled up or Merrick Claus does a nice job of pulling the chair on him. But he had the inside position. He felt he got fouled and it stopped him from getting the ball. There you see his numbers here in seven games in the summer series, averaging 13 points and close to 10 boards a game. Olo Ashalu, he goes for a tumble. Kicks it out, not a lot of time in the shot clock. Junior Kadugan loses the handle, gets it back again. Kadugan puts up a wing and a prayer. Shot clock violation, Edmonton basketball. So a shot clock violation. So great defense here. Everybody's getting their hands on it late in the clock. Shot goes up. And then the foul is called after the shot clock violation. And it's called unsportsmanlike. So Jordan Baker will go to the line now. Olu Ashalu will sit down for a bit. That entire series started with for Edmonton, when the ball went into the post, you'll find, watch that Edmonton, in case Jordan Baker, he'll go down and not only double team, but sometimes he'll bluff the double team, and that's enough to, for someone to pick up the ball. And now Edmonton will have possession here. And right now, the way this game is being played is right down Fraser Valley's alley, right? Absolutely, they're making it a their half-court defense has been exceptional. And Jordan Baker can't haul that ball in. Fraser Valley will take over. And that's just a physical play of Malcolm DeVivier there. He just never stopped. And Jordan Baker got caught in, in, in a loose ball. The officials are letting him be physical. Lassen has been very good so far in this game for Fraser Valley. Here's Capers. Tries the jumper and Capers. He's on his game. Good job identifying the 2-3 zone. And they went right to the middle with it, with Capers finding a nice little hole to get his jumper off. We talked about Capers getting kicked out of yesterday's game. He's lucky he wasn't suspended for this final. Here's Clark. Clark moving in. Came off the rim. De Vivier wants to run now. Managa. Capers, little up fake. Here's Junior Kadugan, and Kadugan. He's did a couple of threes, had a little chat in there with his buddy. And this, is small. and this is what they do. They come out in five guys in transition. They don't score on the primary, but they score in the secondary. Good ball movement, good recognition. All it takes is one guy to get penetration middle for another guy to get open. Brody Clark now. Jumper no good. Managa, he had the rebound. Yeah, I just love the physical play of the Bandits. So now a timeout called. The Edmonton want to talk things over. Okay, we'll step out. It is Fraser Valley 24-22. Fighting for the ball here in St. Catharines. Xavier Moon in the summer series, averaging 17.3 points a game. He's already got 12 already, Joe. Yeah, and he's doing a great job because Edmonton's not, not scoring in the half court, and he's finding a way to score in the half court. He's been able to get to the lanes in the half court, and when you give him the full court, then he's ridiculous. But it's in the half court right now that he's keeping Edmonton alive. And this fellow was a last minute cut with the Toronto Raptors G League affiliate 905. He almost made that team. He's going to be making some team next year, no matter where he plays. This this guy's got some future in basketball. He's going to make some, himself some money. Last few years playing with the London Lightning in the NBLC. And Clark can't hang on. And there's Jans Maniga going right to the deck to save that ball. Yeah, Jermaine, Jahans Maniga on the floor and Jordan Baker on the floor. It's something we've seen all, all series long. 
There's Jordan Baker, and he's going to get a lot of consideration for top Canadian in the summer series. We've got a lot of Canadians on this. On both these teams, have had great series. Jahan Maniga has been outstanding. Maniga in this summer series shooting 41% from three, 45 from the field. He has shot the lights out. There's Kadugan, little crossover, taking it right to the 10, and Junior Kadugan getting all pumped up. He identified a match that he'd like to have Brody Clark on him on the perimeter and identified it immediately that he was going to take it straight on. He ran up the court here. He scared me with that look in his eyes. And there's the finish by Brody Clark for Edmonton. One of the first times Edmonton's been able to score easy against Fraser Valley in the half court. This game has gone back and forth here. 4.30 remaining in the second quarter. Kadugan around the elbow. Missed that one. So when Junior has the match and he wanted, in that case on Brody Clark, he just goes north and south. And now he can use his size and his girth to get himself to the basket. Oh, that's a scary look, Joe. <laughs> it's his game face. Wow, wouldn't want to meet him in a dark alley. Kamba up high for Daniels to swing it over for Diawara. Diawara looking for three. Baker in there, bats it out for Kamba, and Kamba is knocked down. And Edmonton's going to go to the line. Baker with a huge offensive rebound. And you don't have to grab the ball. He just kept it alive. But I thought that offensive set there, Mombi looked like he was heading, he was hunting a shot. And you got to let the flow of the game come to you. Man, Matthew Kamba, boy. I talked about Maniga shooting the ball very well in this CEBL Summer Series. Matthew Kamba has just been money. Comes the shooting the ball as he makes the first of two. And those numbers are very impressive. And the job the Bandits have done on him in the first half have been impressive because this is these are his first points of the game. So they're tied at 26. The Vivier, the Dugan. Classen looking for options. Classen now wants to put it on the deck and drives. Oh, defended as that was swatted away by Daniels. At 6'8 and athletic and strong, Daniels let Eric Classen go up before he decided to go and block it. There's Daniels now in the post. Move on the inside. Take, take care of it at one end, you get rewarded by the basketball gods at the other. Vivier, he turns it over. On the run again is Edmonton. Here's Baker. He was trying to feed Kareem Self, and they're going to say that it's going to be Edmonton ball went off of Glasson. Here's some defense from Daniels. So Daniels knows he's got size and length. Great block, and then he gets up, comes back down, gets a great seal, and just works his way inside. And that's a pretty tough assi uh, assignment for Capers to handle Daniels in the block. It's a tough assignment for anyone. This guy's got an NBA body on him. He is he is ripped. Yeah, Jordan, the seat. Let's listen now to Jermaine Small as he addresses his team. Whose ball, who's ball is it? What block do you want it on? This block. Just Which block do you want it on? No face. Go right into it. Go right into it. What's where? It's on our side. Oh, it's on this side. It's on this side. So let's go Tatum. They're going to go zone. Let's go Tatum. Listen, if you, Deeks, you can go on this spot here. If you catch it, look to score. Because they're looking at this action. They know it. Just look to score. But get here and get to the shot. Guys, if they're backpedaling, go to the rim and finish. All right? You're the help guy. Don't over, Joe, tell don't us what uh, Jermaine's talking about there. Well, the first thing he was talking to his assistant coaches, you could hear David Joseph, Corey Joseph's dad in the background, telling him about which block they wanted to attack. 
But then out of that timeout, he thought that Fraser Valley would go into a zone. So he gave them a, a little a set play that they wanted to run against the zone. He was coaching one play ahead. He felt uh, he was trying to read what, what Kyle Julius was doing, and he thought they were going to go zone. And it looks like they've gone man. Baker spins on to Vivier. Wide open here. Dika Peter McNeely drains the jumper. So they stuck to the, their baseline out of bounds where they've been running very, very well. And getting Dika on the board is really important. Four point lead now for Edmonton, 30-26. Junior Kadugan creates some contact there. No call. Klassen shoots over top of South. And Klassen, boy, he has been money in this first half. Big shot late in the clock. Good defense. And Kamba, they're going to count it. And he'll go to the line. I thought that was going to be an offensive foul myself. Well, I think the foul was on the drive, and then he just finished it real strong. But Matthew Kamba is a powerful player with great athleticism. He gets the foul there, but goes through the contact and completes it. Trying to complete the three-point play. Kamba led all scores yesterday in that victory against Ottawa, 26 points. 9 of 12 from the field, and there's Jahans Menega, and that's what he does well, shooting that three ball. And that's a controlled transition. Malcolm de Vivier runs the floor hard, gets to the middle, but identifies Jahans, and there's no charge on that, just a real good look, good pass. And now Baker's going to come out. Xavier and Xavier Moon checks back in with 2.12 remaining in the half. And the foul count is completely opposite this quarter than it was last quarter with Fraser Valley with four and Edmonton with zero right now. Edmonton close to getting into the bonus. Here's Moon and Moon. Drills that one for three. He's been shooting the ball real well. Three-point shot this entire series has been very, very good. 35-31 Edmonton. Up to Vivier. Nice hesitation and gets it to the rim and deposits that one. Malcolm DeVivier is a physical shooter. He gets their powerful two-foot jump stop and then he's looking for contact and then he goes up and finishes. He, he did that yesterday. Talked about it yesterday, Kyle Julius saying that he might be the most talented player on this team. Just needs to be more aggressive than he has been. Class is trying to turn the corner. Madiga. Vivier needs some help here. Capers to set a screen. Just can't get on the inside here with this Edmonton team. Now they do. And Capers is fouled. Great identification by Junior Kadugan on that. He knew as soon as the big came out to him that he had the mismatch inside. And Capers, I said, is, is long, but could jump out of the gym. And he knew he could put it anywhere, and Marcus was going to get it. Marcus Capers to the line here. Capers, for a number of years, was a teammate of Xavier Moon with the London Lightning and the NBLC. A vocal leader of this Fraser Valley team. And Stu Julius, who's Kyle Julius's father and assistant coach, he had to settle down Marcus Capers after he got kicked out of the game. Peter McNeely, nice move. And he'll go to the line and shoot a pair. Yeah, great move on the isolation to get past the first line of defense, and then he drew contact with that second line of defense. Marcus Capers, his first foul. So Capers is going to get called for the foul in his first of the contest. And at the line for the Stingers, number six, Sadika Peter McNeely. And Peter McNeely, Coach Small said he's probably only had one real good shooting game here, and he can shoot the ball a lot better. But it doesn't affect the way he plays. He is a very good basketball player and a good veteran. He hasn't shot the ball anywhere near like he usually shoots it, but it doesn't affect his defense. 
It doesn't affect the way he communicates with his teammates. Talked about Capers being a vocal leader. Deacon Peter McGeeley is that for the Edmonton side. 39 seconds now remaining in this half. 37-35 lead. Fraser Valley turn it over. Here's the big man, Daniels. And he gets the layup. And Xavier Moon just showed you how quick he was. He was out of the play and was able to come back and grab the steal and quickly into transition. 12 seconds now remaining in the half. The Vivier. Capers. Little floater, too strong off the glass. Time running out. And that's going to do it for the first half. And I think, Joe, Fraser Valley's got to be happy just down by four after two quarters. Oh, they've grinded, and they've, they've, they've got Edmonton a little frustrated. That was the first time in a long time you saw any little flow out of the Stingers. So Capers went down hard, and he is still down. And someone's going to have to go over there and take a look at him because they can't afford to have him out of the game. And Xavier Moon, what a first half he had. 15 points in that first half. And uh, it's going to be very tough for Fraser Valley to try to shut him down. Okay, speaking of Xavier Moon, Amy Otterbright's talking to the star of the Evan and Stingers right now. Yeah, thanks, Xavier. Uh, you're the top of everyone's scouting report, but you still dropped 15 in that first half. What'd you see out there? Uh, just got to be aggressive. Uh, we knew they were going to come out with a lot of energy, uh, so I knew I had to be aggressive from the jump. Uh, just got to keep it going in the second half. In the half court, Fraser Valley's doing a heck of a job defending your bigs down low, really flustering some. So what do you tell your bigs in the locker room in the second half? Um, maybe they're not scoring. Uh, they're drawing so much attention. Uh, we get it in the post, man. They just got to make the right play out of the post. All right, thanks for your time. Good luck right. in the second half. Peter. Thank you very much, Amy. So Edmonton, they lead at the half, 39-35 in this championship game. On the other side, you'll hear from Andy and Javon, and they'll be talking to CEBL Commissioner Mike Morreale. Got a great game here. Stick around, folks. Two more quarters to go. Welcome back to the Meridian Center. I'm here with head coach Kyle Julius for the Bandits. Coach Marcus Capers went down right at the end of the half. What's the update on him? Uh, I think he's good to go. I think he's all right. I think he was a little bit winded. He got hit in his stomach, so I, th I think he'll be okay. So giving up 39 points, not too bad in the first half, but how do you score a couple more? we got to score more. I think we were we were soft offensively with our decision-making. We could have shot faked a few times in the paint, and I think we passed up a few open threes, and then, you know, and then we missed a few good ones too. So we just got to trust ourselves, trust the plan, and get back to the game plan. Good luck in the second half, Thank Coach. You. Thank you. Peter, Joe? Thank you very much, Amy. And there is the aforementioned Marcus Capers. They can't afford to have him out of this game. And as the coach said, he's ready to go as those are the stats from the first half what stands out for you that obviously the band has got to shoot the ball better as coach mentioned yeah but eight games in two weeks the first thing that goes for a lot of people is, is your legs and shooting you know if anything being tired affects shooters and i think what will happen now in the second half both teams the adrenaline will be picking up and they'll play with adrenaline and so that one shouldn't be a factor so 39 35 for edmonton Baker, turnaround jumper, too much on that. And forcing Jordan Baker into a post-up jump shot rather than him taking to the rim there is a win for Fraser Valley. Luachalu, hand off to Managa. And a foul away from the ball. Holding foul called inside on number eight, Jordan Baker. So Baker, his second, his second foul, foul of the contest. Plenty of time on the shot clock here. Ashalu to Cadugan. Junior Cadugan had a solid first half for Fraser Valley. They'll need more of that here. Ashalu got it knocked away from him, but going to be Fraser Valley ball. Good switch and compete by Jordan Baker on that one there. Went to a ball screen as Olo actually rolled to the basket. Jordan started working real hard, and then made a nice block to finish it. Three seconds on the shot clock, and there at the death of the shot clock, 
to Hans Manica. Good out of bounds, good recognition. As we mentioned in the first half, struggled from three yesterday, but he's knocked down a couple of threes here late in the first half and early here in the second half. Edmonton will retain possession here. That's a good sign for Edmonton. It's an offensive rebound. They only got two in that first half, and that's a big part of their game. You see Travis Daniels had six points in that first half, go along with three boards. Diawara sends it up high for Xavier Moon. Xavier Moon, oh, he broke the ankles on Kadugan, missed the three. And then they clean up on the glass, and that's Travis Daniels. A second offensive rebound in one possession. But what a move by Xavier Moon. <laughs> Crossed them up big time. Here's Manica. Pocket pass for Ashalu, able to save him, but then gave it away. Pass inside, Baker. Window went in. Great play, lots of people touching the basketball. Spaced the floor, then attacked the middle. But Xavier Daniels, the threat of him defensively has become a factor. Annika, he'll go cross court for Capers. To Vivier, off the rim. And now Edmonton in the open court. And good move by Mom. Good move by Mobby on that one there. Look at this move. It's almost like Junior looked for the drive and got caught. That one hurts. Yeah. But that's what Xavier Moon could do, I mean, to the best of defenders. And then they spread the floor, and they find the fourth man, in this case, Jordan Baker, with his first field goal of the game. And that's important because that gets him off. 43-38 for Edmonton. Diawara dishes it off. Easy bucket there for Travis Daniels. Coach Smalls is happy because Edmonton now is getting to score at the rim, and this is what they didn't get in the first half outside of Xavier Moon. Vivier launches one, and Vivier comes up big, knocking down a triple. Nice set. Good screen, and Malcolm DeVivier sprinted over there, lost his man, and knocks down the open shot. Moon, some more acrobatics there. And Moon is gonna go to the line here. Fellows calls inside, the bandits number 11, Malcolm DeVivier. That's gonna go against DeVivier, and that's his first of the game. Substitution now for Fraser Allen. The game. Scoring leaders in this summer series. And you had Cameron Forte, who's at the top of that list. Obviously, he was let go by Fraser Valley. Xavier Moon, 17.9 points going into this one. A big time score for this Edmonton team. And see Thomas Scrub, we saw him yesterday. His Ottawa team, expansion team losing in the semifinals. And the incredible thing about Xavier Moon is he scores when he has to score. You know, you know he will still facilitate first. This Fraser Valley team sticking around here, down by six. The Dugan is swing it around. The Vivier puts it on the deck, stops up. A little fade away, missed that one. And that's Travis Daniels' length again, becoming a factor in here. Yesterday, they had a size disadvantage. Fraser Valley did with Hamilton. Is this size disadvantage a little bit different here with Edmonton? It is, but Travis Daniels now is starting to close the gap on that. He's just playing much, much bigger. And there you go, another bucket for the big man. They've done a great job the second half of establishing their inside presence. A couple of crossovers there from DeVivier. Kyle Johnson. Tries the jumper, and no, nothing going here. Last couple of sequences down the court for Fraser Valley. Here's Canva. That's a rare miss. He thought he was fouled. 
So all of the second half, they've done a good job of putting the ball inside. Daniels gets in there, read, read, probes, and gets it over to his left shoulder where he's been very effective. You see his numbers so far this afternoon, 12 points, six of eight from the field, five boards. And his plus minus, he, had to, he was leading that with 12 going into halftime. He was the one person on the court that was making a, having an effect on both ends. That last shot was a tip, so they're calling it Stinger Ball. So Baker with the inbounds. There's Brody Clark. Ambe Diawara. Diawara tried to swing it for Baker. That almost went out of bounds, but there's Moon to save the day, and his pass inside. It goes off of Knicks. Two seconds on the shot clock here. Very similar situation that we had down the other end when they scored on the short clock on the baseline out of bounds. So. Dika Peter McNeely will come in. Mombe Diawara, former University of Calgary Dino, you'll take a seat. They need a catch and shoot here. And they threw it away. Jermaine Smalls will put his hands up to his head. He's a little ticked off. And it was a look for Brody Clark. It was a Jordan Baker thought he had made eye contact with Brody, and it was just a quick look to him. And he caught Brody by surprise. Kyle Johnson, and it's going to be a foul on Tavarian Nix. Jordan, away from the ball. Jordan Baker starting to make his presence. No, and this is what he does. He makes a good read here. He, he claims the, he claims the position is not going to give it up, and Nix goes right through him. Easy, and it's a big turnover. Good, good charge, but a big turnover. There's your Valley to want to press a little bit here. Green self, he comes into the game. Post up now for Brody Clark, bumping there with Nix, turn around. And a foul against Nix. And Nix got his two hands on Brody Clark there, and I think that's where the foul is. He was taking the contact, but he was giving it back. If you can hold the arm bar, you're good. He got the second hand on him. Team Clark, hey. jumper, and there, they're just cleaning up on the glass here this afternoon, and that was Kamba. Yeah. I refer to him as Kamba Slice. I was going to call him, you know, Matthew Air Kamba on that. He's been great off of... His ability to get up off of two feet and just hang in the air. So you watch the competition factor of Matthew Kamba inside when he gets the, when he gets an opportunity to go to the rim with it. Even as a rebounder, they run the set play. He goes for the offensive board, but it's just his lift. It's a powerful lift. You don't put a body on him. He's above you. And that's the one area that Kyle Julius had talked about. We have to equal them in terms of rebounding the ball, boxing out. So Junior Cadugan to the line here. He went for a little bit of a spill underneath the bucket. And that's easier said than done because when you get Olu Ashlu off the floor, who's your physical presence, you're playing with under man, undersized four men. And so keeping the, the only way that you can keep them off the glass is you must be physical on every possession. Lead widening a little bit here for Edmonton, 51-43. Peter McNeely, Kareem Sell, Clark down. Clark trying to get inside, and a hook shot, and sinks it. The adjustment by Coach Small at halftime has been very important here because he's now declared himself an inside presence. Knicks. Driving to the 10, they wipe out the bucket. It'll be a foul against Edmonton, but they're going to call it on the floor. It's going to go against Kareem Self. So right now, you've got Edmonton up by 10. Brody Clark 
leading the way for Edmonton. Brody Clark, 6'8 forward, Edmonton Stingers. University of Alberta, Toronto, Ontario. Big shout out to my mom and dad for being my number one fans. And there you see DJ Four Corners providing some entertainment here at the Meridian Center. As it is now 53-43 in favor of Edmonton. And you just saw Brody Clark there, a little profile on him. His dad was a national team member. His mom was a pretty good basketball player in her own right. He's got a brother that was an outstanding basketball, and he's got a sister who was a rower. So you talk about athletic genes in that family. Brody's had a great career at the University of Alberta, and stepping in here as a graduated U Sport player, the experience he got last year in the, in the CBL has really helped him this year. I saw him two years ago at the U Sport Nationals in Halifax. Very impressed with him. He was the leader of that University of Alberta team, and it's really not shocking he's adapted to the pro game. And former player of the year at the U Sports level. Did a nice job of drawing the foul there. This Edmonton Stingers team, this half, has already got five offensive rebounds. One more than they had the entire first half. Adika Peter McNeely knocking down a tray. And a two-pass direct attack on the zone, getting it to the middle. And then a turnover by Fraser Valley. And Fraser Valley's got to be careful. Things don't come off the rails here. Here, Self misses it. Kyle Johnson has the board. Klassen, who had a strong first half, gives way to Johnson. Curl, but he can't drive. Shot clock winding down to Vivier. Wants to drive, gets it inside. And Olu Ashalu gets the bucket. They needed that one, Joe. Great job by Melton Vivier to find there. And Edmonton was real close. They were rotating down and just missed that. Their defense has improved, and they're forcing Fraser Valley to use their best to score. Boom. Jumper from the free throw line. No problem. His free throw line jumper has turned around to be somebody else's layup. He is incredible. I don't know if I've seen him miss in the series yet. His accuracy has just been phenomenal in this summer series. De Vivier rises up for three. So back to back trips down offensively. And Fraser Valley. Able to get points. And good recognition by Jahans Maniga. Olu Ashley was working in there. They drew, drew some help and left Malcolm open. And then Brody Clark, he's starting to get his game in order. Kyle Julius, timeout call. And they have to find some answers here offensively, Joe. Yeah, but they have to find some answers defensively, too. And that's what. Fraser Valley does. They want to make sure that they stop you on defense, and that creates their offense. But if they're going to trade baskets, they're going to lose that game. They need to create something off the defensive end, and this run right now by Edmonton is affecting Fraser Valley. And they have been monsters on the offensive glass here this afternoon. That's been a big difference. So Xavier Moon shows you there what he can do with the crossover. And there's always the threat that he's going to the basket. So you have to be careful. And then when he gets an opportunity, or this one here on the tip, this is the combo tip. So you're watching the five offensive rebounds in this second half that have already surpassed what they did in the first half, and they've turned into points. And this is the play that Edmonton needs to compete against the Bandits. It, it, does this go back to the size mismatch, or is it more than just the size mismatch? It's now them using their size. In the first half, Fraser Valley dictated the fact that we're not going to let you inside. And now they're establishing themselves inside. Maybe they didn't show enough respect for the Bandits in the first half. But now it's a focus of what they want to do is put the ball inside. Kyle Julius, after this summer series, he heads to Asia, to Taipei, coaches a team in 
Taiwan, the Formosa Dreamers, while he's preparing these games late at night, he's helping to prepare the games for the Formosa Dreamers via Skype and Zoom. So he's, he's basically coaching two teams. That's an easy career. <laughs> but he seems to be a man that can't get enough of basketball. Right that, now, he's got to find a way to get his team back into this one, down by 12. And that's a good good start off a nice ball screen action, finding Ola Ashley rolling to the basket, putting the ball in his hands where he's got a chance to attack the rim. We're making the first of two. You know, that last attack, Olu made sure that he drew contact. An eight-year pro, played in Japan, played professionally in Canada. Made the big Elam ending winning shot in yesterday's game against Hamilton. Here's Kareem Self. Kyle Johnson trying to defend him. Clark again in the post, Clark. Six in the shot clock. Leave the bucket off. It's going to be a foul against DeVivier. And Clark's going to the line for two. And that's an offense where Edmonton scores and Xavier Moon doesn't touch the ball. So now Edmonton, they're into the bonus. We've got 213 remaining in the third quarter. Brody Clark's done a real good job of getting inside, getting Fraser Valley into the situation where they have to foul. Now that's the bonus, and that's part of the attack inside. To hands, Menega, class and inside. Olu Ashalu, no, rolls off the rim. Good sequence, though, there from Fraser Valley. Something to build on. Moon. On the drive. Hit the side of the backboard. And it's going to be a foul, an offensive foul against Moon. It's one of the few times where Xavier Moon gives it away what he's going to do early. And Johannes Maniga, who's been the leader in steals for the Bandits, now causes another turnover. These two teams open up the summer series. 113-100 victory for Fraser Valley. Play whistled down. Coach Julia said he didn't even bother watching the tape of that game. He said that was so long ago, forgotten that. As we mentioned, their team changed a little bit with Forte leaving the team. So it was replaced by Matthew Kemba. Fraser Valley's been here before. Yesterday they were down 13 in the fourth in the fourth. And what they did was they used their defense to create stops and then just chipped away on the offense, got to the free throw line, made you know timely baskets, didn't force anything. And they and they're smart enough to know that right now that they're still in this game. Down 62-51. Plenty of basketball left here. 130 remaining in the third. Again, a press here from Fraser Valley. And all they're trying to do here is just wear some of the clock out. As Peter McNeely turns the corner on Medica. Hoop in the harm. No. Yes, it is the hoop in the harm. And Peter McNeely will go to the line. Yeah, and that started with a little bad risk reward situation. Jahan's trying to draw the charge. It got beat, and all of a sudden rotation wasn't there, and it surprised everybody. Great job by Dika. Really important. He's knocked down a three now. He's got a three-point play. This is what Coach Smalls was talking about, the confidence he has in Adika Peter McNeely. He knew that he was going to come and give him something today. Talked about Brody Clark coming from a basketball family. Adika Peter McNeely, his brother Jay, head coach at Seneca College in Toronto, a CCAA team. So now 65-52 for Edmonton. Behind the back by 
to Vivier, and then he loses the handle, goes to the deck, can't get the ball. They push it up for Baker, and Baker, he tried to feed Kamba, and he went right into our cameraman down there. Good transition, but watch Merrick Claussen just get back. He does a great job of getting back the second time now that he's broken up a transition situation by his hustle. And this is our cameraman, Alex, down there, right into your living room, folks. And Kamba getting up a little slowly there. Seems to be okay, stays in the game. Under a minute now in this third quarter. Olu Asholu. Underneath the bucket here. And he got pushed up by Brody Clark. Looked like good defense by Brody Clark initially. He, he put Olu Asholu in jail. And then maybe because he gave him a push. So, Asholu will go to the line. Second foul. Olu Asholu shooting two. Going against Clark. Both teams into the bonus with 46.3 seconds remaining. With 46.3 remaining, you're going to find Edmonton more than likely is going to look for two for one. And what they're talking about is two for one, getting two shots off in the 46 seconds, getting one possession, defending, and then finishing the quarter with the sec their second possession. They get the board there on the miss on that second free throw attempt. Kyle Johnson. And then Keepers off the feed, throws it down. And that started with the offensive rebound off the missed free throw. So now it's a 10-point lead for Edmonton. That pass is no good. Klassen, he wants to slow it down. 16 seconds now remaining in the third. This will give this Fraser Valley team a big boost of confidence if they can get a bucket here before the quarter ends. Here's Johnson, and that's blocked by Xavier Moon, but Moon is going to get called for the foul. Good screen for Kyle Johnson there. Xavier Moon came in with the left hand. Reacted late, came in with the left hand. Kyle Johnson at the line. Just got a piece of him. But this, these 46 seconds that we talked about in the last free throw when they were here, Edmonton missed the, missed the rebound, gave up a two, go down, and then get allow, allows Fraser Valley to come back and score the last points of the quarter. So where they were in control, they lost a little bit there. Not a good finish for Edmonton in Coach Small's mind. So Johnson gets the second. Not a lot of time left. And boy, we're going to have a good finish here. Fraser Valley came on towards the end of that third quarter. And after three quarters of play, Edmonton, Xavier Moon, Baker, and company in front. 65-56 will come back. Fourth quarter action. CEBL title on the line. Welcome back, everybody. You've got to tip your hat to this man here. Travis Daniels, sister passed away last week. He's had a real tough life. Mom suffered from mental illness, went from group home to group home to other family members living with them, was saved by basketball, and the nation getting a chance here on a national stage to watch him play. How he's been able to do this, I have no idea. But this guy is mentally tough, and he's been a big part of this Edmonton team, Joe. In this second half particularly, he influenced a bunch of shots on defense because of his defense. And then on offense, he set the tone real early of getting the ball inside and attacking the rim with it. He decided he wanted to stay with his team here. His sister's funeral was yesterday. So again, we pass on our condolences to the Daniels family. And we're underway, fourth quarter action, 65-56 for Edmonton. And Kyle Johnson opens up the frame with a nice jumper. When you put a shooter on the free throw line and then let him get outside and shoot the ball, Kyle Johnson now is going to find himself. This game is far from over, 65-58. Peter McNeely, jump back three, step back three, excuse me. Can't make it, left it short. 
Here's Klassen. No look feed. Olo Ashlo gets it back again. And boy, he did some heavy lifting in the paint. And is fouled and will go to the line. Yeah, great offensive rebound by Olo, and he knew that when he was, he knew that he missed the shot. So Olu Ashlu goes hard for it on the drive, knows he's going to miss it, and he just keeps fighting for it. He knew it was off. Great rebound. Gets rewarded. And in just a second here, Mombe Diawar will check back in for Edmonton. Try to change things up a little bit for the Stingers. Nice when you have a big man shooting 87% from the free throw line. Checking back into the game for the Stingers, replacing. He's able to make both. And now that Edmonton lead is just five. Two very good possessions right there for the Bandits coming out of that timeout. Here's Diawara being hounded by Kyle Johnson. Diawara driving, gets met there by Olu Ashalu. Good defense, Edmonton gets the ball again though. Six seconds on the shot clock and again defended by Capers. And Baker can't convert. Who's got it? That's gonna be Edmonton ball, but some good defense there from Fraser Valley. Real good, real solid defense here. They rotate over. Next man out, they do a good job on the closeout. Good, good tack by Jordan Baker. Baker looking for options here. He's going to shoot the jumper. And now you hit the sense. Fraser Valley got their confidence back again. Edmonton's had two poor possessions spacing wise. Not what they were doing early in, in the second half. Second chance opportunity here. Capers. Johnson. Dean defended there by. Diawara shoots over top of Diawara. And Edmonton, they'll push it up the court. Pass here for Kamba. Kamba trying to feed Daniels, and Kamba is going to get charged with an offensive foul. Malcolm DeVivier gets back on defense, and he's playing Kamba to drive all the way. If Kamba slices off that and throws the alley oop up, Daniels finishes, but the Vivier played Kamba to drive all the way. Good defense. Lassen will bring it over the timeline. Lassen wide open. Can't make the three. But that's a communication breakdown by Edmonton. Daniels running the floor there. Diabora. Clark sets a screen. Four on the shot clock. Diabora, that's a deep three. Missed it. And Klassen picks it up. Merrick Klassen wants to drive. Klassen, high glass, no good. What you get with Bobby Diabora is offense, but sometimes what he does is he stops the flow of your offense because he's a scorer and he's always looking to score. Got a number of players like Dia Ward can do a multitude of things on this Stingers roster. Here's Dia Wara. Tried to feed it, tried to force one. Caper says thank you very much. Here's Klassen, no look feed. They kick it out. The Vivier misses. And Edmonton again fortunate. You can't pause the ball on offense where you're making everybody stand still on defense because the defense gets the advantage. Junior Cadugan and company trying to get back into this one. Down by five. Jermaine Small telling his team, hey, just chill out a bit here, folks. Calm down. We're losing our heads. Calm down, guys. Now we're reacting to every call being made. That's not who we are. Poise and composure. Calm down. I don't want to see you. Yes, chill out. It's only a championship game. Relax a little bit. 
Yeah, he just <laughs> he's getting his guys to refocus because they've spent too much time worrying about the last call. And now they've got this run that they've got to be able to answer against. Main small, plenty of experience. He's the head coach of the University of Lethbridge, was an assistant at Queens, an assistant under Roy Rana at Ryerson. He knows how to run a team. He's done a great job here with his Edmonton team. There you go. Calm down. Brody Clark gets the bucket. So Edmonton has two players in Daniels and Brody Clark right now who can post up, and they're just going through the best miss, the best match that they have. Seven-point lead now for Edmonton. 6.29 remaining. Just a reminder, folks, 11 Elam ending. Olu Ashalu can't finish, but he's hacked. Daniels... <laughs> He's uh, got a sarcastic smile on his face as he's being called for the foul. And you know Olu's going to finish at the rim. You know, and early in the first half, I thought Edmonton did a great job of bluffing. And now Olu knows that nobody's coming, so he's just getting to Daniels' body and trying to extend himself with that right hand. Olu's made a number of trips here in the second half to the free throw line. The team shot from the charity stripe poorly yesterday, 65%. And now a little discussion here. Somebody must have jumped in to the lane. It looked like the violation was from the perimeter. Now in FIBA, if the violation is from the offensive team and the ball goes in, it still counts. Fraser Valley a lot better here this afternoon from the free throw line. Shooting over 80%. Moon rises up and drains a three. Great read by Xavier Moon to back cut from the half court to get himself open for a three. Eight point lead now. 70-62. The Dugan. The Dugan wants to drive. This is the mark there. Camba. He gets surrounded by a couple of Fraser Valley players. And what Fraser Valley has been very good this entire series is on those drives, they haven't forced it. They've, they've been able to stop, relocate, find the open person on the outside. In that case, Junior was going up against guys with a lot more length than him. Jahedis Maniga replaces Junior so Kadugan. Maniga will come in. Junior Kadugan has done stellar work here this afternoon. He'll take a bit of a rest. This is still in the ballpark here for Fraser Valley. Moon. Deacon Peter McNeely going baseline in the corner. Moving that rock around. They go cross court. Daniels for three. No misses. Get an offensive board. Camba, Peter McNeely. And this time they drain it. Boy, they move that ball around so efficiently, Joe. When you move the ball around, you move the defense around. So when you do that, you take a shot. All of a sudden now, you've got better offensive rebounding situations. And now an offensive foul against Jahens Maniga. So the ball gets moved, the defense is forced to move. And when the defense moves, you watch the offense, the rebound set up. Kamba goes down, gets it, kicks out, and now you've got Adika Peter McNeely, who is here. I would think that Coach Jermaine Small is happy with his performance here this afternoon. Not that he had a bad performance yesterday, but shooting the ball much better here. And this is Snigger basketball playing at a little crisper speed right now. And Xavier Moon there setting himself up for that nice little pull up. And that ball spotted away by Kamba and that pumps up everybody in those gold jerseys. Matthew Kamba has had a coming out party this entire series. This looks like he's got the shot off for sure. And Kamba gets out there, no foul, just gets out there. Great block, tough block. <laughs> Everybody, you see Capos pumped up. Everybody rising up from that bench. 
And now Kyle Julius has to figure something out here with time running down on this Fraser Valley team, albeit we're going to get to Elam time, and Elam time has uh, been very good for Fraser Valley. Yeah, and the good thing that Coach Julius has in his pocket when he goes into that timeout is we've been here before. He can remind them that they've been there before, that, that we, they were there yesterday. We came back and we played a strong finish to get ourselves to Elam first, and then in Elam we took over. So right now his focus is get to Elam by playing great basketball. The bracket for this summer series. Yesterday, Stingers got by Ottawa. Ottawa, a tired team, four games in five days, and then you had Hamilton. It looked like Hamilton was going to be in this championship game for the second year in a row. They did not manage Elam time properly. And Fraser Valley is here. And it's 75-62, and we're getting close to Elam time. 4.54 remaining. Kadugan, his shot no good. Xavier Moon. He has 24 points. And that ties a record for most points in a CBL championship game. Brody Clark Brody knocking down the jumper. Good set there off a little flex screen post up Brody Clark. They have stayed with the post up the entire half. Kadugan. Ashalu trying to muscle his way in there. And Olu Ashalu. He's going to go back to the line again. He's made a steady trip to the line here in this second half. And Coach Small is okay with that because what he doesn't want, he doesn't want the ball to go in and then go out for a three. So and when the ball went to Olu Ashlu there, he's okay with the foul. He's okay with the two-pointer. He doesn't want it to come out and get swung around for a three. That bucket that Brody Clark had, that gives him 14. Moon has 24. And Adika Peter McNeely, 13 points in this game. As he is four of 10 from the field, two of four from three. And Olu Ashalu getting the job done at the free throw line. 77-63. There's some up-court pressure from Fraser Valley. Edmonton able to break out of it. Yeah, it's pretty easy to break pressure when you get the ball back from Xavier Moon. <laughs> yeah, with his speed. There's Moon, deep three, and Moon sinks it. He's been doing that throughout this summer series. He's made it look easy, Joe. Absolutely, and he when he had the match on him, of Olu Ashnew on him, his eyes got big. Kadugan wants to drive, stopped up by Baker. Pass for Olu Ashalu, no good. Peter McNeely misses. Canva in there. Wow, they're playing volleyball there as Baker batted that back to Moon. It started with Canva coming from the perimeter. Moon. Pass down low, and Baker is fouled. And he'll head to the line. And now you're starting to see Edmonton impose their will in this game, Joe. Absolutely. And Jordan Holy Baker did a great job of sealing the position in there. Hadn't scored a whole lot, but knew right then and there, if I'd seal, they're going to, they're going to foul. And it looked like he could have drawn, actually, an unsportsmanlike. I don't think it was called that, but it looked like he was in position. He had buried Malcolm, Malcolm de, de Vivier. A little bit of a delay here. As we wait for Baker to shoot a pair. Uh, time running down here on this Fraser Valley team. Uh, they got it going a little bit there in the fourth quarter, Joe. And then, like I said, this Edmonton team, they decided to change the gears on them. Yeah, and they just stayed with their plan. They made a quick adjustment here. So this basket's important because the make or miss now we got to decide what Elam's target score is. 
so it's 81 plus the nine. So our target score is going to be 90. And now that's been determined after that free throw. And there you take a look at the trophy. One last season by Saskatchewan. Saskatchewan surprised everybody. They beat Hamilton in the final. Everybody thought that it was going to be an Edmonton-Niagara final. That didn't materialize. And uh, that is a beautiful trophy. And that's Dr. Mike Terrigan. He's the chief medical officer for the CEPL and a guy that really helped them figure out how they were going to put this tournament on in the time of COVID. And uh, he might be the real MVP of this CEBL Summer Series. Well, I think the entire plan is the MVP. And the idea that the, the medical component of this in the COVID attack was handled by Niagara Public Health. So it wasn't the league involved in that. And that's really important because they had great partnerships with the provincial government, the federal government, and, and the civic government. And I mentioned it yesterday when I talked to Mike Morreale. Uh, this tournament, Summer Series, excellent. I mean, and the staff, and they pulled people from different teams to help out for this series. You couldn't find a more cooperative group. If you needed something, you got it. And uh, I mean, they just worked very hard to put this off, and they made my job, your job, our entire staff, Amy's job, so much easier. And um, hats off to this this league for putting on this summer series. They've done a fantastic job, and they should be very proud of what they've done here. Okay, Elam ending. We've explained it every game. We need to explain it. Some people are still not too sure about it. So, uh, you here add, you go, Joe. You add nine points to this team that's leading. That becomes a target score. First team to the target score wins. And we've had a, a bunch of different ways a team have won with threes, with twos, with ones. The key in Elam time we found was play your game. Don't try to win it with an Elam winner. Play your game and good things will happen. So the target is 90. And a travel against Fraser Valley. And, and look at Edmonton's defense on that. They collapsed in the middle, but everybody shot out knowing that Junior Cadogan was driving to be a passer rather than be a scorer. Fraser Valley presses, and once again, Edmonton able to break out of it. Here's Xavier Moon. Just take his time here. Moon wants another three. Missed that one. Baker moves in there. He got the rebound. How he got that rebound, there were two Fraser Valley players there, Joe. He just split them and won of that ball. And both players were trying to rebound, but nobody boxed out Jordan Baker. If you don't put a body on him, that's just a free lane for him to come in, and he'll put his body on you. Led this summer series in rebounding. It's the first of two. Dean Smalley took over this team from Coach Craddock, who coaches at University of Alberta, Barnaby Craddock. Just too much on his plate. Small comes in, and this team didn't miss a beat. Here's Capers. He gets knocked down. It gets away with a quick hook there. Edmonton foul was called gets himself to the rim. Now, the one foul. thing you'll find with Elam time, if you're the team that's losing, so if this was a regular game, and we've got a 19-point spread with under four minutes, in this case, under Marcus three minutes, Capers, the chance of strike, Fraser Valley coming back is minimal or none. So what are you going to get? You're going to get Hack-A-Shack. You're going to get, uh, you know, a slow-up timeout game. It's just going to draw here. Because the clock's gone, this is your greatest chance. All of a sudden, the chance of victory becomes greater than it was. It's not by any means high in numbers, but it's much better chance for a team that's behind to win in Elam time than it is in a regular game. And if you talk to the coaches, um, you know, they're not too fussy about Elam time, but, you know, in the case of Kyle Julius, they've had success in Elam time. I think most people aren't fussy until they see it, see it exactly. and become a part of it, and then they realize how much they like it. 
There's Baker to the 10, and then backing him up is the big man, Travis Daniels. And the nice thing what Edmonton's doing now, this is not a press break, this is a press attack. They went with five guys down court, north and south, pass the ball and attack the basket and finish it off with a rebound. 84-65, Edmonton. Six points away from winning a CEBL championship. Four on the shot clock from the corner. Dugan gets it to go. Got the roll to go for him. And Kadugan puts the shoulder into Moon. Foul against Junior Kadugan. And that was just a stop transition, but here in Elam time with the bonus. So you look at them running. They move the ball, they spread, they find their guys inside position. Travis Daniels, they use their size, they've used their size the whole second half, and that's been the difference. Now Moon to the line, there you see the numbers. 27 points, 11 of 14 from the field. And eight games in two weeks is tough. His aerobic capacity is through the roof. Over the moon, maybe. Over the moon, there you go. Nobody runs as much as Xavier Moon. Here's Capers going coast to coast. And now Moon once again. Moon in trouble, gets trapped. Peter McNeely, baseline for Jordan Baker. Short little baseline, Jimmy sinks it. And now Edmonton on the verge here. Wide open, Jens Medica, a fake, and knocking it down. This Fraser Valley team, Joe, they don't quit. Have it all series. Play whistle down. That's going to be a foul on Kyle Johnson. So you've got a 15-point lead, and all the pressure now is on Xavier Moon to knock them both down. So here we go, Xavier Moon can end this game and bring a CEBL championship to Edmonton. And it's only fitting that he be the man to do so. So one point away. And players are up on the bench here. And Jermaine Small to the right of me here, hugs his assistant coach. They were expected to get to the final last year. They were upset. They came back, brought most of the players from last year's team, and Jermaine Small, he had a game plan, and that game plan worked, Joe. It really did, and in the second half adjustment of getting big again, I thought was a huge move, and Adika Peter McNeely just gave them a little bit more than they needed in the first half, and then he got Xavier Moon for the entire game. Xavier Moon was outstanding. Adika Peter McNeely had talked to Coach Small, I met him downtown, bumped into him downtown. I said, uh, what's going on with a deacon? He said, he has not shot the ball well. Well, boy, last couple of games, he's really performed. And this whole team has performed. They've had so much depth and uh, well-deserving of the CEBL title. Yeah. And there is Xavier Moon. Going to get a lot of consideration for the MVP of the championship game, I would think. And see him with Jahans Medica. And there is Jermaine Small. Thursday, I went to practice, and they weren't paying attention. They had that long layoff. And boy, he blew the whistle and just took a strip off this team and got their attention. I stayed for another 10 minutes of practice, and the pace in practice was just crazy. They got vocal, they started communicating. They got snapped back into shape, I guess you could say, and it results here. A win yesterday against Ottawa, and now they win the championship. And their, and, and their time off, they used it to, pre to prepare. And in that second half, guys stepped up. You know, Matthew Kamba, offensive rebounds were huge. But Travis Daniels started it in the second half. Let's show you how the game ends as 
That man right there, Xavier Moon, went to the line. And there you go. <laughs> and in front of us is the Edmonton team celebrating. There you see them coming off the bench. And you know, for these guys who, some of these guys were playing in Europe, playing in other leagues, the season gets shut down because of COVID. This has got to be a happy ending here to get a chance to play for something. You, you didn't think we were going to see basketball exactly. for a long time. And everybody bought in. The players bought in. The organization did a great job of setting it up. But it, it's, it's the players who bought in and believed in it. We had the, some of the best talent in Canada. And this team has just gotten better over two years. So credit to the Edmonton Stinger organization, Coach Smalls, and his entire staff. Well, Joe, Abe, it's been a pleasure to work with you. Thank you, my friend. Outstanding. Hope we can do it again. Time for us to take a break. Edmonton wins the title. On the other side, you'll hear from Andy and Javon. Welcome to the CEBL Summer Series post-game championship celebration and trophy presentation. What a wonderful 16 days of basketball celebrating the CEBL and an incredible Canadian basketball community. With me on stage, we have the founder, a true visionary of the CEBL, Mr. Richard Petko, and our commissioner and CEO, Mr. Michael Morielli. Have you breathed yet? Take a breath. Oh, yeah. This is... This is uh... <laughs> This is fantastic. The game on the on the court today was fantastic. Two great teams. Kudos to both of them. Only one trophy to give out. We'll give that out shortly. But if I had many more, I'd give them out to every single person in this room today. All those people have done the tireless work and hours to get us to the point where we can actually play in a pandemic situation. It's, it's kind of remarkable. Our partners, our sponsors, the CBC, Media Pro, our coaches, officials, players, staff of all types from the scorers table to holding cameras to behind the scenes and the fans at home. We can't wait to bring this trophy back. I know these guys can't wait to bring it back to Edmonton. And then to be able to bring back CBL basketball to you in 2021, and hopefully in a more profound way, live and in, in front of some fans. I do have to say though, thank you for this gift of basketball during this time. I think for, I speak for a lot of people when I say that. And before we award the trophy, will you do this the honor of this MVP for the championship weekend? Yeah, this, this shouldn't come as much surprise. The, MVP of the CBL championship game for 2020 is none other than Xavier Moon. Congratulations, Xavier. To be in a gym during this time is special, but to win a championship, different ball game, Tell me how you feel about with this group of guys being able to do this during this time in our world. Man, uh, we work so hard. Um, a lot of hard work on and off the court. Um, big compliments to Mike Morielli and everybody else who put this together um, for allowing us to play the game that we love. And I mean, it's a big compliment to our team, man. We worked hard. Um, everybody stayed together and we got it done. Since I've gotten to know you guys during training camp and throughout this process, the one thing nobody here sh shied away from was talking about wanting to come back and win this after feeling like you <laughs> fell short last year. I know you have a fantastic Edmonton fan base. If you could just give them a message about your team and what it took to do this. Man, um, it was a hard journey, um, but it was an easy decision to come back. Uh, like you said, we fell short last year, so we knew we had to come back, and everybody said they was coming back. Uh, so we got the job done, and man, we love Edmonton. Let me ask you about us northern folk, though. What do you think about <laughs> basketball up here? I love it. Uh, if I could stay year round, I would. <laughs> Hints? <laughs> <laughs> All right, and now we're going to send it over to Mr. Richard Petko to award the championship trophy. Okay. I would love to hand out this championship trophy with my own hands, guys, but uh, I broke one, so sorry about that. Coach Smalls, your team came up really big. Congratulations on eight straight wins to be the 2020 CBL champions. Mike Morialli, please do the pleasure and hand it over to Coach Smalls, what he deserves.
Coach, when we spoke during training camp, you told me that the basketball gym was your sanctuary. Yeah. And now that you've had this this experience with these men, what can you tell about them with the process to get to the top? Yeah, that's the thing. We focused on the process more than the goal. And I told them, like, let's take it day by day, inch by inch, and just continue to get better. And um, all the credit goes to these guys. You know, the first game was tough, and we got punched in the mouth. But I told them, you're a winner, you learn. And uh, they just refused to lose. All right, now that we're done, no secrets being saved. What is the biggest strength of this group as a collective group? Well, that's the biggest strength. We're a group. Um, any game, anyone could be the player of the game, and they just, they just play for each other, and um, they're very selfless, and um, they sacrifice for one another, and, and that's the thing. Bringing back the core was the key, and um, we just we just got it we just got it done when we need to get it get it done. <laughs> Thanks, Coach. I had to I had to take a foul. Jordan, yeah. come over here. Congratulations. <laughs> All right, Jordan, you were clearly one of the leaders. You were all over the court this entire experience, but you're also a basketball coach. So tell me about what you'll remember most about this process. Uh, as a basketball coach, I was pretty disappointed with my performance tonight. Uh, I can't, can't imagine what Jermaine was feeling. Don't know why he sent me back in the fourth quarter, but uh, uh, the team was great. Um, guys stuck together, guys executed, uh, especially defensively down the stretch. Couldn't say more about these guys. And uh, President Brett Fraser, uh, how many Frosties does he owe you after that trophy? Uh, I'm more of like a Baconator guy. Uh, don't like the empty calories in the Frosty, you know what I mean? So. <laughs> Congratulations. Go enjoy them, all right? Thank Thanks. you for your time. And thank you. We'll go back to you, Andy. Well, let the party continue. The boys are having some fun. Why not? They are champions. We'll be back to wrap here inside our CBC Sports Studios. There you go, Edmonton Stingers, 2020 CBL Champs.